Hi YouTube, this is Joe Calton with Calton Cutlery and visit me on the web, CaltonCutlery.com. Okay, so uh, uh, t I think today I'm going to shoot like a half dozen videos or so. Um, I know lately I haven't, you know, I've been, I try to do one video a week. Typically I don't shoot those once a week. I'll just go ahead and I'll get in the mood to shoot videos and I'll shoot ten of them. And then I'll just release one of them a week. And I try to keep, try to, keep to that schedule. Lately with spring and, um, you know, outside uh, chores and, you know, some other work outside the shop and stuff, I haven't been able to get one a week, but um, hopefully we'll shoot enough today to carry us through until maybe beginning of summer or something like that. So today's video is going to be on how most of my kitchen knives start out. The I would say probably 70% of... Uh, I don't know. Let's back. Well, because I make kitchen knives, pocket knives, straight razors, hunting knives, choppers, folding knives, uh, you know, liner locks, slip joints. You know, I just make a whole bunch of stuff. Um, the vast majority of the knives I sell are kitchen knives because, honestly, that's the majority of the knives that are that are in use. Um, and so, uh, so I make more kitchen knives than I do anything else. The majority of the kitchen knives that I make are stock or move. Okay, so they, uh, you know, I take, uh, there's no forging involved except for, you know, straightening them. Um, and I order my steel in, um, I get it from one of two places for my 1095. Um, I get, and what, uh, I guess the easiest one to start off with is Jantz Knife Making Supply. This is the place that I get most of my non-standard size uh, 1095, okay? So here in the shop uh, for 1095, I use 1 16th inch or um, 0 0.63, uh, 063 thousandths, uh, something like that. Um, 332 so 0 0.094, uh, 093, somewhere around in there. Um, so the 16th inch are for mostly uh, pairing knives and neck knives. The 332nds are for um, 8 inch chefs, uh, nakiris, cleavers, stuff like that. Um, also for a little bit heavier neck knives or the EDC belt type knives. Um, 332nds also works pretty good for up to a, a, a 4 inch uh, folding knife, be a slip joint or, or a liner lock some, somewhere around in there. <coughs> so Jantz, I typically get, uh, so I, I order 16th inch and, and 332nds in big sheets, and we'll go over that in a second. The other sizes, like 8th uh, inch for um, uh, a little bit heavier use pocket knives, or you know, if somebody wants a really heavy duty type cleaver or something like that. Um, and then well, I think that's. Maybe if I'm going to use 332nds for or, uh, 3 sixteenths or something like that, I'll get that from Jantz Knife Supply. They sell it in a variety of sizes. Um, I've been using their steel for oh, at least a decade, and it's been very, very clean, very repeatable from batch to batch. So if I order, you know, five sticks of, you know, eighth inch 1095 from the, these guys uh, today. And in three years, I order, you know, some more. It's generally speaking going to be about the same stuff, okay? There's no, like, wide variations that you get for, from some other suppliers that I've seen. So um, I, I really like Jantz, and a big old shout-out to them for, for keeping their steel, you know, nice and consistent. That's for your small batch stuff, okay? <clears throat> like I said, I make a lot of kitchen knives, neck knives, you know, things like that. And for that, I get it in, uh, for 1 16th inch and 3 32nds inch, I get that in these sheets from Admiral Steel. Um, you, so what today the video is going to be on is turning this sheet into smaller strips. Admiral will shear this uh, to whatever uh, width that you want, okay? Um, I really prefer just to order the big sheet and then just to cut it up myself. Yes, it's an extra step. Um, yes, it's more wear and tear on my bandsaw. Um, it's more, you know, time spent standing here at the bandsaw cutting up sheets. You got to set up this, this nice fancy 
ladder arrangement with a piece of three quarter inch uh, uh, black iron gas pipe. <clears throat> you know, I mean, it, it takes extra time and everything, right? But the great thing about it is, is that it's all about consistency for me. Okay, so when I order these sheets, I always say that they're 4x8. I don't know why I got that stuck in my head. Probably because 4x8 is a standard size sheet of plywood or OSB, something like that. But these are 2 foot. They're 2x4. Okay, now when I order them, they're actually a 2 foot by 8 foot piece. And then Admiral shears them in half just to make it a little bit easier on the UPS guy. All right, so, um, but still, that's quite a bit of steel. Um, in fact, these, this sheet right here is the, the, the second half of a sheet that I ordered August 28th of 2017, which, hang on just a second, let me grab two patterns. Make sure you're still, and eh, we'll bring you over here for this. Let's see, okay, is the whole sheet in frame? The whole sheet's in there. These are two of my most popular knife patterns. We have got the Carter Pattern Necker, and we have got uh, my large paring knife, right? There is a whole bunch of those in this sheet of steel, right? Even when you go to 8 inch chef's knives, <clears throat> even for a sheet of 330 seconds, for eight, mostly 8 inch chef's knives, there's a whole bunch of 8 inch chef's knives in there. <clears throat> so, So the biggest idea of it is that you order in a large quantity that's as, in as few pieces as possible, okay, to ensure more consistency in between the products, right? I mean, we all want the 8-inch the chef that I make today, I mean, if it's a good one, which I hope it is, to be pretty much the same 8 inch chef as it was 10 years ago and pretty much the same 8 inch chef that it's going to be in another 10 years well in another 10 year we hope that they get a little bit better each year of course um, you know just through fine tuning heat treats and you know grinds and you know playing around with different variables but if you order your steel in sheets you're really trusting your supplier there to make sure that all of those sheets or uh, sticks, that all of those sticks are from the same piece of steel, right? Which I've had suppliers where I've ordered 10 different sticks of steel in the same size, and I swear that in heat treating knives from those 10 sticks, I could have swore I had three different lots of steel. Okay, well, when you order a big sheet of steel like this, you're pretty sure that this stick is going to act pretty much the same as this stick because it's from the same sheet of steel which is from the same melt which is from the same roll right okay so um yes it's a pain in the butt having to, to cut this steel down and everything um but it's not quite so bad for the benefits that you get which are you know repeatability from this corner of the sheet to that corner of the sheet there's also some um, customization you can do there. So let's say somebody orders up. There for a while I was making these ridiculously large Chinese cleavers. Um, these guys were ordering like five inch tall freaking Chinese cleavers. And um, uh, there ended up being some, some problems with those in the heat treat. I ended up losing like half of the ones that I would actually make. So I don't make, offer those anymore. But if you wanted to, you, I mean, you could cut a five inch strip off of this uh, sheet and use that for a custom project. Of course, if your bandsaw would, um, uh, you know, would, would make a five inch cut. <clears throat> so, 
yeah that's all about that so what we're going to do here is the setup we have got you know in the old shop i didn't have near as much room as what i've got in this shop and so i was pretty much at the mercy of friends so when it came time to cut strips up off of a new sheet of steel pretty much the next guy that showed up that wanted to bs well i'd sit grab him and say okay well hey while we're bs and you hold the other end of this piece of steel so that we can get it cut up so i can get back to work <clears throat> now I've got more room and so it's nicer. So the setup I've got today is I've got two step ladders. I've got the piece of uh, three quarter inch um, uh, black iron uh, pipe. I usually use that for gas lines and stuff like natural gas lines, propane stuff. We've got a chunk of wood there that uh, the axe is pretty good rest right you know over here if we have to use it. We have got my um, DeWalt uh, deep cut uh, can't remember if they call it a porta band or if porta band was an actual uh, manufacturer of another um, saw like this. And now I think everybody calls these porta bands, even though they're uh, not that manufactured. Uh, this one's got a <coughs> variable speed and a trigger lock, and so I've got it set on uh, the highest speed, and I've got the trigger lock engaged. I've also got it running with a foot switch. You guys have seen this before, I bet. Yeah. So there's a foot switch. So if you, uh, you know, if you slip, take your foot off the switch and uh, the, the saw blade, quit, you know, it slowly winds down and quits, uh, quits moving. We've got an old bent up um, license plate just to kind of <coughs> keep some of the trash out of my eyes. All right. So this, I'm afraid, is going to be kind of boring, but... It is what it is. So, and I'll probably just, maybe I'll try the whole, uh, uh, no, actually, let's put you over here. Maybe I'll try the uh, editing thing and let you see a minute or two of this and then call it good. So, we got safety glasses and earplugs. Um, this is your warning. Uh, this saw is kind of loud in person. I've got no idea how loud it's going to be on the GoPro. All right, so we get our foot switch way back here. And away we go. Gotta get the other side over the top of this pipe.
Okay. So that's a pretty good way to make little strips out of uh, big sheets. All right. So now the next thing that's going to happen. I'll just set those right there. <clears throat> the next thing that's going to happen is I'm going to go ahead and shut you off. And then I'm going to go ahead and cut out um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight strips. They're two and a quarter inches wide. And then I'm going to leave the center section. Okay. I'm going to leave the center section, which is about six inches wide or so. Um, and I'll leave it for, you know, custom type deals, you know, one offs. Uh, you know, the other day I had somebody ask me for a big old honking like a Ulu sort of knife, which, um, you know, that's what you leave that, that center piece out for. Um, you know, just so that you have something in, you know, so you can make custom sizes if you need to. So I'll go ahead and cut all these strips out, and then I'll go ahead and on both sides take a magic marker and mark uh, that it's 1095. You don't really have to mark the thickness because, you know, you grab a hold of it and you, you feel how thick it is. Um, and then it go, goes ahead and gets stacked over there um, next to the corner of the bathroom, and, you know, there it sets until, uh, uh, until I'm ready to lay out another batch. Um, once I'm ready to lay out the batch, of course, I take the steel, and um, if it's really filthy like this is, I'll go ahead and wipe it down right quick, maybe with a, um, a paper towel with some denatured alcohol on it or something, and then go ahead and, and put dicum over the top, grab the patterns and knives that I'm making, you know, lay them out, scribe them, and then cut them up into, you know, cut the pieces up, profile them, all that kind of stuff. But anyway, so I thought that, uh, yeah, I just thought you guys might want to see, um, you know, the fact that... Uh, that I think I'm not too sure how many other knife makers get their steel in big sheets like this it's, it's not something I, I usually ask a whole lot of guys about um, but that's the way I do it and that's why I do the the big sheets yes it's kind of a pain in the butt but you get a whole lot more consistency and once you get a heat treat dialed in that takes time okay so if you can do most of your so like this sheet right here, and then the other sheet that I had of the, the 330 seconds that I cut up yesterday. Okay, when, when I'm done with all of those, and I order up another couple of sheets of steel, once I get to where I'm using that steel, I'll go ahead and make a couple of test knives out of each sheet, run them through my standard heat treat for 1095, and go ahead and test those knives to destruction. Okay, we'll do edge flex tests, we'll do edge retention tests, we'll, um, you know, break a couple of the knives, you know, we'll look at the grain structure, grain size, you know, I mean, all that kind of stuff, right? And as long as they, you know, perform within the range of what you're expecting, well, then you're good to go. You just keep right on, keep right on trucking. If something comes up out of the ordinary, you know, hey, you know, uh, ran us through the normal heat treat and the edges are a little bit too soft, well, then you know, okay, we'll stop. There's something going on with that particular lot of steel. Either adjust your heat treat to that particular lot of steel and mark it and make sure that, uh, you know, all the knives from that piece of steel come out with a new heat treat. Or find something else to do with that, um, that sheet of steel that uses an awful lot of steel for a knife like, I don't know, like maybe cleavers or machetes or, you know, something like that. Or honestly scrap it and then get another piece of steel. Um, steel is probably one of our cheapest expenses in knife making, um, so it pays to, um, uh, you know, to, to get the good stuff. All right? So, uh, yeah, I think that's a bit about it. Okay, well, this is Joe Calton with Calton Cutlery. You can visit me on the web, caltoncutlery.com. Hope you enjoyed the video, and we will see you next time.